Hi, my name is Tammy Miller. In this buffers video, we're going to learn to identify a buffer. To identify a buffer, we first must understand what type of solution a buffer is. A buffer must contain either a weak acid and its conjugate base, or it must have a weak base and its conjugate acid. The reason that we like buffers is buffers will resist changes to pH when we add acid or base to them. This is great when we're running different types of chemical reactions, as well as different types of biological reactions. So this becomes very important in a lot of the sciences that we do. Solutions that have strong acids or bases as well as their conjugates, cannot serve as buffers. And the reason is strong acids and bases do not resist changes to pH. So they will change very, very rapidly with pH. That's why they cannot be a buffering solution. When we look at a buffering solution, the effective pH range that we see is very close to the pKa of the weak acid or the pKb of the weak base. In general, the effective range is within plus one or minus one of that pKa or that pKb. Again, if it's only plus or minus one, this means it's resisting that change to pH when we're adding acid or base to it. Anytime we add an acid or a base to a buffer solution, the base or the conjugate base will neutralize the acid that is being added to it. Or the acid or conjugate acid will neutralize the base that is being added. In this graph, if we look at our x-axis, we see that we are adding sodium hydroxide. So here we're adding a base. And on the y-axis, we see the change in our pH. When I look at this, I need to notice the difference in these two graphs. If we look at the graph that is down here in blue, what we notice is there's not a lot of change to that pH. It goes from approximately pH 2 to just under a pH of 3. That tells me that this is a buffer. This is going to be a weak acid that we are adding our sodium hydroxide to. If we look at the red graph on the other hand, what we notice is that there is a huge and very rapid change in the pH when we get to approximately 10 milliliters of our sodium hydroxide that has been added. Because of this huge change, this tells me this is not a buffering solution. And this tells me that this must be a strong acid that I am adding the sodium hydroxide to. And when I look, hydrochloric acid is indeed one of our classic strong acids. These graphs show very, very easily what we mean by resisting change to pH. The blue graph is resisting change to pH, where the red graph there is no resistance. The pH is changing very, very rapidly. We now want to look at a couple of questions to see if we can identify our buffering solutions. In our first question, we're giving the composition of a few solutions, and we're being asked if these are indeed buffers. When we look at A, we see that we have hydrochloric acid. This is a classic strong acid and its conjugate base. Because we have a classic strong acid, this is not considered a buffering solution. When we look at our second example, we see equal concentrations of a weak acid and its conjugate base. Because this is a weak acid and its conjugate base, this is indeed considered a buffering solution. Our third example 
we have a weak acid and its conjugate base. Because these are weak, even though the concentrations are not the same, this is still a buffering solution because we have a weak acid and its conjugate base. Actually, this weak acid and conjugate base are very, very important in biology. This buffering system is responsible for maintaining our blood pH. So this is a great one to know for biology. Finally, we see that we have one molar phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid is considered a weak acid, but I want you to notice that there is no conjugate base here. Because there is no conjugate base and a buffering solution must have both the weak acid and its conjugate base, this one is not a buffering solution. So you've got to have both parts for this to be a buffering solution. For our second question, we want to look at the graph below and we want to figure out which solution contains a buffer. First thing we always do when we look at a graph is we always look at the X and Y axis. So I see on the X axis that I am adding hydrochloric acid. So I know I'm starting with a base. And I also know when I look at the Y axis that I'm starting with a base because my pH is starting at a pH of 12, which is very basic. So we need to figure out which one is a buffer. Remember earlier when we looked at the graph, we said the one that resists changes to pH has our buffer. So solution one definitely contains a buffer. This is because it's resisting change to pH. It's going from a pH of 12 to around a pH of 11. That is a great resistance to a change in pH. Solution two, however, has this very, very rapid change in pH around 10 milliliters of hydrochloric acid being added. Because it has this rapid change, this one is absolutely not a buffering system. To identify a buffer, we always need to be thinking about what its function is. And the function of a buffer is to resist changes to pH. Once we understand that, we can easily identify either by seeing a weak acid in its conjugate base, a weak base in its conjugate acid, or by looking at a graph and seeing that our pH is not changing, 